So on this special Sunday, as we think of how we can hear God's voice calling us and inviting us to serve Him and to follow Him in different ways, we're going to be turning to the third chapter of 1 Samuel. So let us pray together. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us this day, we pray. We thank you so much that you speak into our lives. We thank you, Lord, that you've got a destiny uh, for each one of us, that you've got a calling that you place upon us. Enable us, Lord, to hear your voice even now, even today. Speak, Lord, for we, your servants, are listening. Amen. There's a lovely story told of how four men were sitting in an outer office waiting to be interviewed. They were waiting to be called in. A job had been advertised to hire a telegraph operator. Two of the four men talked while they waited. A third guy read a magazine. Suddenly the fourth chap got up, walked to the door marked private, and went straight into the office. A few minutes later, he emerged with a smile on his face because he had got the job. Now, why did he get the job? He got the job because he knew how to listen. You see, inside the office, the boss had been tapping out a code message. And the code message said this, the first man to read my message and come into my office will get the job. Friends, this is a season, and indeed, truthfully, it's always a season for us to listen carefully to the voice of God, to listen carefully to what it is God wants to say to you and to me and how God would want to speak into your life and into my life. God speaks. He speaks clearly. And we can recognize the voice of God. You always recognize the voice of of a close friend whenever you get a call from a friend that you know really well. God speaks, and when God speaks, God calls. He speaks through His Word, through the Scriptures. God also speaks supernaturally through the Holy Spirit, through words of wisdom, words of knowledge, prophetic words, even dreams. God speaks to us. These all need to be tested, of course, against the Scriptures against God's Word. He speaks to us also through, through friends, through the, the, the godly advice of mature Christian friends. Again, we need to test what they're saying to us against the Scriptures. God speaks as well through life circumstances. God speaks. He's continually speaking. The challenge is, are we listening? Are we listening to the still small voice of God's Spirit. We read in verse 10 of today's reading, the Lord came and stood, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. The story is this. The boy Samuel is awakened from his sleep. He hears someone calling his name in the middle of the night. You see, God knows us by name, each of us, all of us. He knows all there is to know about you and about me. He knows our ancestral family history. He knows our current circumstances. He knows where we're living and what we're doing. He knows everything that there is to know about us. And none of these things, indeed nothing, prevents Him from calling us into the destiny that God has for us. Samuel hears a voice. He thinks that it's the voice of the aged priest Eli who had called him. In some ways, not a surprising reaction. I wonder, did the old man often call for Samuel's assistance in the middle of the night? I wonder, did he often need the assistance of of Samuel in different ways during the hours of nighttime. Anyway, Samuel ran quickly to his bedside. 
but Eli hadn't called Samuel. When this happens time and time again, when it happens for the third time, Eli realizes that the voice that was calling Samuel was the voice of God. Eli becomes aware, perhaps the Lord is calling this boy. In the days when Samuel was a boy, we read that the word of the Lord was rare. Verse 1 of chapter 3, now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. It's not a season of revival. It's a season that's not that different to the season that we're living through in the West today, where the church is often dull and cold and indifferent to the voice of God, not positioned to listen to the Spirit of God or to obey the Word of God or to be led and guided by the Holy Spirit of God. It's a season in Samuel's life where Samuel was a a young lad. He doesn't seem in this reading to see himself as anything special. He's just an ordinary young chap, and he sees himself as such. He doesn't even seem in this particular reading or at this particular time in his life to be that connected to God. We read in verse 7, Now Samuel did, did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. Samuel's simply willing to do what Eli asked him to do. He's at work in and around the temple. So he's a young lad that is teachable. He is humble. And we're more likely to hear God's voice if we position ourselves humbly before God and allow ourselves to be those who are willing to be taught by God. He does, however, seem to allow what knowledge he does have of God to begin to shape his life. And again, whatever knowledge you and I have of God, let that be what shapes us and what forms us for life and for our futures. Samuel's already ministering in the presence of the Lord, even though he doesn't really know what he's about. We read in verse 11 of chapter 2, And the boy was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli the priest. Ministering to the Lord, even though he's not very sure of what he's doing. The presence of God is also impacting the life of this young man. You see, the presence of God does change us, and we ought to be those who position ourselves to be in the presence of of God. We ought to seek after, search after, pursue God's presence. I love what we read earlier in chapter 2 and verse 21, where it says, Indeed, the Lord visited Hannah, and she conceived and bore three sons and two daughters. And the boy Samuel grew in the presence of the Lord. That's a, a lovely thing. May you and I also be men and women who grow in the presence of the Lord. However, just like Eli's two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, uh, Samuel doesn't yet really know God. He's open to God. He's positioned himself in such a way that he's in a place where he's listening to God. Be a listener. Be somebody who, who listens to God. Three times he gets up in the middle of the night. Are you listening? Are you expecting to hear God speak into your life? Am I expecting that God might lead me forward and onward with Him? You see, when our hearts are tender, God can speak into our lives and we can hear His voice. Samuel hears God's call Samuel positions himself to hear God's call, and God speaks. Sometimes our hearts and lives are are more open when we've reached the end of ourselves, when we've come to the end of our own resources, as it were. Someone has said our extremity is God's opportunity. 
one of the great leaders in the church in bygone centuries was a man called John Wesley. He, he's really the father of the Methodist church tradition. Uh, John grew up in a large family, uh, and uh, it was a very religious family as well. Uh, and John actually was quite involved in things religion. In fact, he was very involved in things religious in that he was an ordained Church of England cleric. But he didn't really know God, not really, not deeply. He wasn't in a position where he was regularly hearing the voice of God and being led by the voice of God and knew that there was a call of God on his life. And then one day, in his journal, John describes a, a wonderful thing that happened. He says that he felt his heart strangely warmed. And from that moment on, John Wesley hears in a, in a new way the call of God on his life. It's a call to preach Christ. It's a call to preach Christ to those that others weren't reaching with the good news of Jesus. It's a call to preach Christ to the poor, to the working classes in England and Ireland and indeed uh, other parts of the world as well. It's a call to make disciples, followers of Jesus, who would in turn make other disciples for Jesus. He, he, his heart is set on fire with a, a new love for God, and out of that he begins to hear the voice of God and to hear the call of God upon his life. God has a call on your life and on my life. God has a destiny for each of our lives. The Bible, every page of the Scriptures, encourage us to draw nearer to God, to seek to hear more clearly from the voice of God, to call on God. And Eli here very wisely counsels or advises the young Samuel. In verse 9, he, we read these words, Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Eli has become aware that perhaps God is calling Samuel, that the voice Samuel is hearing just might be the voice of God. We read verses 8 and 9, the Lord calls Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Eli gives Samuel great advice. Friends, if you sense that God just might be calling you, that the voice that you're hearing in ways that you maybe don't quite understand or can't quite hear clearly just might be the voice of God, then I would encourage you to listen carefully, to listen closely, to perhaps talk to godly friends, perhaps an older disciple, an older follower of Jesus, an older Christian, get their perspective and their advice. And out of your heart, pray, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. If you're sensing that God just might be calling you to perhaps hone your gifts and prove your gifts in sharing your faith, it might be that you want to, to, to tie in and uh, get involved in one of the courses that we run here in the Diocese of Down Under Moor. Perhaps you might consider becoming a diocesan evangelist so that you could more effectively share your faith in Jesus Christ with others. Or it might be that you're just beginning to sense a, a call on your life to explain the Scriptures, to explain God's Word, to, to preach and to teach the Word of God then perhaps you might want to consider training to become a diocesan 
evangelist. On the other hand, it just might be that you're feeling a nudge to lead God's people, to lead a church, to lead a local congregation. Often in church history, men and women were disillusioned with the institutional religion around them. Uh, But that didn't prevent God calling them. Uh, There was nothing cool about the religious institution of the temple in the days of Samuel. The reality was that Eli's two sons were, were rascals, ungodly men. But God was looking for a young man who would be passionate about his word, passionate to hear his voice, passionate as a prophet in Israel to impact the lives of those around him with the truth of who God was and who God is. And into such an institution, God calls Samuel. God was then and often still is today persistent in his call. Might God be calling you to consider church leadership? Might God be calling you to to lead a church forward in mission and in ministry? Might God be calling you to impact a community, even as the bell is ringing and tolling? Might God be calling you to follow Him, to ministry and mission and service in today's Ireland, in today's church, in today's world. God calls ordinary men and women, people like the boy Samuel. His call is a call to ordinary tasks. His call is a call to serve Him. His call for some is a call to preach and to teach His Word. His call to others is to pastor His flock, to pastor His church. His call to others is to seek and to bring Christ to those who don't yet know the love that Jesus has for them. God is often persistent in how He calls, and He's persistent in these verses in how He pursues and calls the young Samuel. God doesn't overlook Samuel's slowness in recognizing who it was that was calling him. We read in verse 10, the Lord came and stood calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak for your servant hears. As at other times, perhaps there have been other moments, other seasons, where you have sensed that God just might be calling you. God calls us. God speaks to us. He's sovereign in His call. His call is always good. His call may be very, very challenging. His call will almost always require courage to respond And his call is one that we will need to keep on pursuing and continue responding to. He uses individuals, and so he calls individuals. He calls individuals to reach the next generation of children, to teach them the Word of God as Sunday school teachers or or youth leaders, or in other ways, God calls us to mission and to ministry. God calls us so that He might reach the next generation with His love, with His truth, with His embrace. He finds us where we are. He takes us to where He wants us to be. He takes our lives and He transforms them and uses them in ways that we would never have imagined, never have imagined. I love how the call 
that would come uh, on the life of David is described uh, in the Scriptures where it says that he took David from the sheep pens uh, and led him to become the shepherd of God's people Israel. And that with skillful hands and integrity of heart, David led God's people. This boy, Samuel, in this story would go on to become one of the Lord's most anointed prophets. We read further on in verse 20 of this chapter, and all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was established as a prophet of the Lord. There's no limit, friends, to how God might use you. Respond to his call. He might use you to even reach a nation for him. Samuel listened to God's voice. He responded to God's call. He obeyed God's call, and he went on pursuing God's call all of his life. And we read in verse 1 of chapter 4, the word of Samuel came to all Israel. Your life, your life could impact a nation or nations. So don't ignore God's call on your life. Don't ignore that call on your life to follow Him all your days. Don't ignore that call on your life to honor Him in all of your ways. Don't ignore that call, that godly call in your life to truly worship and serve Him with your whole life. Don't ignore that call in your life to go to wherever He sends you to go and to do whatever He tells you to do. Don't reject the voice of the Almighty who calls us, but say yes, yes, yes to God's call on your life. It's His call. It's for His glory. The great Apostle Paul, who was so wonderfully used by God, began as Saul, and he wrote these words in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. And because of Him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that as it is written, let the one who boasts boast in the Lord. Dr. Helen Roosevelt heard God's call to give her life to Christ as a young girl, and she obeyed. Later, she heard his call to become a doctor, and she became a doctor and obeyed. Later, as a doctor, she heard God's call to go to the Congo as a missionary, She went there and obeyed his voice and saw God do some wonderful, wonderful things. She had some incredible highs, but she also had some awful, awful lows. She lived through lows and highs. The end of her life, uh, in or around uh, the age of 90, she said this, looking back over her life, She said it was all a privilege. It was all a privilege. The destiny into which God calls us is a privilege. It will have lows. It will have highs. But it will all be a privilege. Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? 
I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. Let us pray. And as we pray, I'm going to use the words of that hymn that I've just quoted. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I, who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? I, the Lord of snow and rain, I have borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them, they turn away. I will break their hearts of stone, give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them. Whom shall I send? I, the Lord of wind and flame, I will tend the poor and lame. I will set a feast for them. My hand will save. Finest bread I will provide till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them. Whom shall I send? Lord, in these days, pour out upon your church your holy and life-giving Spirit. Give us, Lord, the courage to respond to your voice. Give us, Lord, the ears that will listen to your voice. Give us, Lord, the will that will obey and respond to your call. Respond, Lord, from our hearts with hearts that are set ablaze with a, a deep, deep love for Jesus. Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. So, Lord, will you call into ministry? Will you call, Lord, to make a difference in your world, women and men who will obey that call and will courageously do the thing that God asks us to do. So pour out your Spirit. Pour out your Spirit. Fill us with courage. Fill us with boldness. Enable us, Lord, to obediently do your will and respond to your calling upon our lives so that we fulfill the destiny that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.